Good morning, welcome to today's full day of eating. I hope everyone is well. We're gonna start this off straightforward. First and foremost, four weeks back into the gym now. My train day nutrition as follows is 600 gram of carbs, 60 fat, and around about 300 grams of protein. You've already seen and heard that protein. You're like, fuck me, George, why are you consuming that much protein? I'll explain throughout the video, but let's just chill, yeah? Not even a minute into the video, just Bring it down a notch. I weighed in 167 pounds this morning on the dot, which puts me about seven pounds up in two weeks. A little bit of fat, a lot of fullness, a lot of just intramuscular fullness as well, and just obviously eating way more food than what I was doing previously. So that's to be expected. My goal is to head up to 190 pounds by the end of this year, which when you think about it from August till the end of the year is a fair significant amount of weight. But I've never been there before and it's something that I'm gonna be documenting. It's something which I think all naturals need to experience in order for them to take things to the next level. They need to unfortunately get a little bit uncomfortable and sacrifice a little bit of the condition and, and push things beyond where they usually would and I'm gonna be that guy to show you how to do that please like please always subscribe and if you are watching this right now going I love the Georgie boy he's a fantastic young good-looking blondie blondie this is my second one of the day so far it's only 8 a.m. so as you can see I drink a fair amount of water roughly about six liters so just sip on it. As long as I drink a litre and a half, an hour and a half, I'm up. So I get up at six. By half seven, I've already drunk a litre and a half. I'm good to go. I'm good to go for the rest of the day. I can just sip on it. Hydration is key first thing in the morning, guys. Make sure you fucking hydrate, you motherfuckers. No one's a little bit later. I haven't actually started fucking planning it yet, as you can see. I normally eat a roughly between half seven to half, half seven to eight, sorry, but had a bit of work on the old lappy to do or extra work to do, so I had to delay it a little bit. I usually eat about every two hours, so about eight o'clock now, I'll eat about 11, half 11. I'll then go and train, have my intra workout between like it's one to three o'clock, and then at three o'clock, uh, four o'clock, I'll have meal number three. Then six o'clock to seven o'clock, I'll have meal number four. And then eight o'clock to nine o'clock, I'll have meal number five. So that's a day done and dusted, planned out already. You'll be surprised, I'm not actually using the, uh, the standard eggs, which I usually use which are these bad boys. Obviously, these are the absolute goats. I'm using these irresistible, free-range, golden yolk eggs from Co-op. They're a fucking irresistible, baby. And they are very golden, and they do taste quite nice. Because Sainsbury's on Sundays close at four o'clock, and I didn't have time to get there, so uh, Co-op had to do. Yes, great value in this video. Yes, I, I feel your pain, I feel your pain too. <laughs> Shit, that is fucking hot, boy. That is hot, man. You have joined me at meal number one, which is coming to you at 8.13 a.m. in the morning. Like I said, a little bit later than what I usually would do, anywhere between half seven and eight o'clock. It is what it is. I'm not gonna cry over fucking 13 minutes after what I usually would do. You may notice this is a very basic, boring, bland first meal. So I've literally got four eggs, two bagels. I've not even seasoned the eggs. I've not even put any fucking butter on the bagels at all. And you might be thinking, George, you weird cunt. What's the reason behind that? One reason is I'm pushing to 190 pounds. I'm pushing a, uh, to the weight which I've never, ever been before. And I know what my appetite is like when I do get heavier. And I've said these sort of tools like butter, ketchup, or just sauces in general, and even just seasoning the eggs. Those for me are tools for me to get to where I need to be because they're gonna help my appetite. It's gonna taste better. It's gonna be easier to get down. Like if I squirt ketchup all over this right now, it's gonna be so easier for me to eat compared to what I'm doing right now. And right now my appetite is fairly high. So it makes sense in my head to rely on that as a, as a tool when I need it, when I get heavier, when my appetite is slowly declining. I'm gonna literally put it into a burger if I find the bottom of it. Is that the bottom, is that the top? There we go. I'm gonna put it into like a burger like that and I'm literally just gonna eat it. And I've spilled fucking yolk everywhere. Supplementations, oh yeah, and an apple. Of course, Pink Lady Apple, come on. I think that's about 80 grams worth of apple there. Supplement wise, vitamin C tablet. D3 K2 tablet, if it focuses there, there we go. I don't know if that's focused. And I'm still on the prescription the doctors gave me, believe it or not, they gave me this. You could actually get this from Boots if you Google it. Yeah, it's 
it, it is how it's helped. They gave me fucking bare of them. I don't even know. I've, I've literally got this much left, so I haven't got much left to take of it. But I've still been using it. it still helps for whatever reason. And yeah, that's gonna be my number one. I'm gonna polish off with some water as always. I'm gonna plan out my day via the old diary just to know what I'm doing, all that sort of good stuff. And yeah. I'm gonna fucking heat this, stop waffling. It's going cold, Georgie boy. Come on, you know the procedure. Let's fucking see you in the next clip or whenever that may be. He said next clip and that's gonna be a bloody taste test, isn't it? Fuck me, George. When are you ever just gonna fuck off and go away? Little bit of dab in the old yolk that has gone runny. I like runny yolk. And that's a dry bagel. And that tastes bloody delicious. So appetite is sky high right now. Come on. In you get you. Better than getting in the fucking boot, innit, Diesel? Innit, boy? Yeah. We go for a walk, yeah? Right, good morning. This is from Forged London. I think that's how you say it. I should really actually check before I say this sort of stuff because I don't like getting it wrong. If you're interested in some of the chains that I wear, you see in some of my videos, like I have a compass, have this little uh, little blade on the end here. Now make sure you go check them out. The link will be down below. I haven't got no discount code. Or, oh shit. The link will be down below if you want to check them out. Me and Diesel are off for our sort of morning walk. So you probably noticed from some of these videos by now, I have a bit of a routine with my day. I like having structure. I like doing the same sort of stuff. It fucking works. I fucking enjoy it. So roughly this first walk is about, all right, enough. You're going for a walk, yeah? Just shut your fucking damn mouth, you little fucking swat mate. Roughly this walk is about, I'd say four or 5,000 steps. I throw a lot of sticks for Diesel. I, I try not move much because I don't want to waste much energy before I go train. Finally, the weather's actually really, really nice for a change. Getting some of that daylight exposure, first thing for your circadian rhythm, plenty of benefits for your skin, grounding as well, take off my fucking socks and stand here on the ground. Lovely job here. Yeah, I am wearing a slides to go for a walk. Fucking judge me. Come on, come on, judge me. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Spin. 12. Around the world. Good. Sit. Lay down. Up. Me back, me back, me back, me back, me back. Good. Preparing the pre-workout meal. Come to you at 10 past 11 in the morning. Something which works really well for me if it focuses, which is easy digesting, is the cream of rice. Caramel biscuit flavor is the best cream of rice I have used ever. And that is a big statement from the Georgie boys. So go check it out. You can actually get it from Supplement Mad. Use my code George on 10 Or you get it from Complete Strength if you're a dickhead like that and you don't want to use my code. Oh, oh, cheek of it. I combine that with the protein sludge of the double chocolate. Perform way. Again, my favorite protein. I don't think I will ever sway away from this. I've had it for over a year now. From the old Supplement Mad. I'm going to combine that with 25%. 25%. You're ruining my video, bruv you just want to fucking play all the time. No, we're not playing. Look at that, it looks like a fat old doobie in your mouth, boy. 25 grams of 85%, yes, lint dark chocolate, and then 200 grams of blueberries. Frozen sayings with blueberries, don't even at me, boy. These, these are the pengest on the market, you know? Get yourself down there, unless the fucking store has been absolutely raided by me. This is the problem with these fucking proteins. You can't find the scoop there. Yeah? They're literally, look, where's the scoop in that? I'm ending up having to fucking finger the fucking powder to be able to get the scoop. Come on, bruv. This is 2021. How can you not invent something which allows me to grab the scoop from the top? Like, just do what ghosts do. You know, ghosts, they have like the scoop at the top here. It makes it so much easier. The last thing I do is add three grams of pink Himalayan salt. Why pink Himalayan salt? One, taste. Two, there actually are some better minerals in pink Himalayan salt compared to your regular sort of table salt or whatever you want to call it, sea salt, I think it is actually. I normally would put one gram of low salt on there as well. You may have seen the low salt, it's like 66% less sodium. Basically, it has a shit ton more potassium in it. And again, question, question why I would do that. 
A lot of people forget that glycogen, so carbohydrates, is dictated by water intake and sodium uptake. So having those two is really important to, again, uptake carbohydrates, use them for your training sessions, or just use them for energy. Again, potassium is an important electrolyte, which most people forget about. They just think about sodium. Not always the case. Add in some electrolytes, or like potassium, into your, um, into your pre-workout makes a massive difference. So three grams of that into the pre-workout, Normally one gram of, of low salt, but brown out isn't the end of the world. I'm gonna leave this two hours, it's about half past 11 now. I'll probably go train about half past one in the afternoon. So it's intra workout time. I love making my intra workout, as weird as it sounds. I like to, I don't know, just like to do all this sort of stuff. I love supplements, a bit weird like that. Everyone questions, intra workout, is it essential? Do we need it a part of our day? Do we need it during our training sessions? And the simple answer is no, you don't. You really, really don't. Like, it's not going to be a game changer. You're going to wake up tomorrow morning. You're going to gain 10 pounds of muscle. For me, I see the benefits. It's more of a trial and error sort of thing. I say to clients, try it. If it works, if you see the benefit, then invest into that. Especially in natural bodybuilding, like 1% is, is better than nothing. And 1% can make a massive difference, especially when it comes to competing, that side of things. Trial and error. See whether you like it. If you don't like it, if it's not worth the investment, you're not going to miss out on too much. Reason why I take intra workout one, sustained amount of energy throughout my training session, something which I went through in one of my previous videos about having a, a highly balanced like a dextrin powder to give you sustained amount of energy. So you're just training consistently like that instead of you train like this and all of a sudden towards the end you have that crash. Each workout will prevent you from doing that. The second reason is calories. I consume at the moment 600 grams of carbs on a train day. 50 grams of carbs is from my intra workout. It's a great way of getting in some food as well or additional calories, I should say. Food is totally not the right word. 20 grams of EAs is normally 20 grams of protein. Some people don't do it, some people do. Who gives a fuck? Just do what works best for you. Um, 50 gram of carbs, and then I'm gonna add my creatine in there just for when I remember to take it, if I'm honest, because outside of that, I always forget to take my creatine. In a red, if I ain't got a shotgun, I probably got two shanks, that's 20. Got things on things in the whip, so if I get nicked, I'm back in a cage. Caught my first attempted murder at 15 years of age. in for push. I'm not sure if I've recorded this session again, just like last time. Either way, we're fucking recording it, does it matter? Something which I'm doing slightly different this time round when I'm writing out my logbook numbers, um, and I've seen AJ do this, I've seen him speak about it on a podcast, was actually pre-writing out what I'm gonna be doing in that particular session, as you can see here. So what I've done is I've just basically looked at what I've done last time and just think, right, would I need to increase on the loading? Would I need to stay on the same weight and just build it up to the highest rep range, for example, rep in that rep range? And what I'm really trying to think about here is just kind of already being in that preset sort of mindset, whereas I know what I'm doing. So many times we've gone and done a warm up set and we've gone, oh, fuck me, that feels heavier than normal. And immediately when you think like that, you're already having a negative response. And most likely the session is going to be affected because you're thinking in that sort of negative way. I think Nick Gloff um, came up with this idea. Shout out Nick. I love Nick. He's uh, I'm a big fan of Nick, actually. So I've written out everything that I plan to do and I'm just gonna follow that and obviously look to, to beat what I did last time. So obviously there's a few movements which I've increased the loading on. Most things I've pretty much stayed the same on because I believe last time I did this session, I was three pounds lighter than what I am now. So I was 163.8 on the 23rd of the 7th last month. I'm now on the 2nd of August, 167, which is a new high for me in this push-up phase. So I predict I'm probably gonna be strong on a lot of these things just because I have a lot more body weight behind me than previously. And most of the case, or most time when you're doing push movements, you typically are stronger when weight moves weight at the end of the day. Looking forward to it. Try and trial in this, see how it goes. Um, if it fucking don't work out and I regress on everything, I ain't fucking doing it again. As always, hardest working motherfucker in this gym. I've seen someone in here, he's big. I'm fucking jealous. He's a big old lad, but I'm determined to outwork him, that's for sure. And if I can prove that, then that's something I can be uh, proud of myself. One day I'll be the biggest, that's for sure, I promise you. Anyway, enough fucking waffling, more action. Let's fucking do this. Nut, nut, misses, but nut, nut, everything. Fucking forgotten about. Switch off, switch off, and let's fucking do this. So everything I'm doing, pressing-wise at the moment, 
is literally all incline. I've seen a lot of improvements, just not only in my clavicle sort of area where I'm trying to fill out, which is very hard for naturals as always. Just the overall chest development has been a lot greater when I've done fucking incline pressing. For me, I think a lot of people, especially beginners, they all just want to flat press, flat press, flat press. And I see the benefits of doing it, but do not neglect your incline presses. So I did the incline dumbbell press to begin with, and then doing the hamstring incline press as well. Four sets of just incline, direct incline chest work, and then doing a high incline Smith press, which you'll see shortly, which is target more of the anterior deltoid, but you are gonna still get a little bit more of that, that clavicle sort of area. Again, just filling that frame out. That's where we need, as most people, to add density. So don't neglect your incline pressing, that's for sure. You may notice these little bumper things here. It's basically just to help get the first rep up. If you haven't got a spotter, use something like this. It takes a couple of inches off and you'll be able to get that first rep up a lot easier. Black flag Turn one, turn one into two with this press down at 60 grand in white. white. Brick boys on the site, she just sort of watch and lost her mind. Lost it. Baby, I'm a savage, I'll put your ex in the hospital bed. Clamp four on the press last night, then brought that down and said, I got paid a plug by eight and it's nearly half past six. Stressed out to the max, no I should have paid this cash, not ticked. Clamp two in the press last night when ball rings bought off white. Splash. Marco Pierre's, I mean steak with a glass of wine. Stepped, stepped in with a stab proof, cause I'm way too big with the ops. I don't give two fucks, I mean gauchos drinking pock. Stepped out with a big watch, got two in a queue in my sock. Ro 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 Roku at the band old spot, cause the neighbors tipped them off. In the post office with 10 bands, trying to change that shit to euros. Could've plugged on tape pounds and I can't pay this man with no sort code wait, wait. One four for the Z, the raw that shit like Jordy Shaw Why? Stepped out with a hammer cut, just wet man down like gold me and, bro, me and bro just weighed that out, now I gotta fly bits down south Sweet one put dick in her mouth, she's one fuck for the clout CPS can't charge me, could've found no prints on a gun <laughs> Getting there no faith for last, just bust in case for fun Turn one into two with this press down at 60 grand in white Brick boys on the site, she just sort of watched and lost her mind. Lost it. Baby, I'm a savage, I'll put your ex in the hospital bed. Clamp four on the press last night, then broke that down and said, I got, I got paid a plug by eight, and it's nearly half past six. Stressed out to the max, knew I should have paid this cash, not ticked. Clamp two in the press last night when ball rings bought off white. Mark, Marco Pierre's, I mean, steak with a glass of wine. Right, so post-workout, I have 125 grams of Rice Krispies and I also have 60 grams of whey with some water. I just drink it with water, it's just easy. I've obviously, obviously had digestive issues in the past, but just sticking to rusty old water does, does help a lot. And then one little marshmallow bar. I normally go for the chocolate, but just mix it up a little bit. Again, post-workout, a lot of people say, oh, I've depleted my glycogen storages whilst I've trained. I don't necessarily believe that, you know, it does take, depending on what you're eating, a lot of time to, to uptake and, and use those, use it as energy or glycogen as energy. So I would say what you want to really focus on in this post workout window is just something easy, straightforward. I typically stick below 10 grams of fat just because of uptake, you know, digestion. And, and the demand is there, you know, the demand for food is higher in the post workout window than it is any other time of the day. So in my opinion, it makes sense to add in more food in that particular window, digest really well, digest really quickly. I notice after an hour after training, you've had your post workout, you're still hungry again. Telltale sign that you're processing food quite quickly in that window. Fats are really low, proteins kept really high, gone for a way ice little course, easier digesting. Post workout makes sense, and um, I'm gonna eat this at the fucking gym just so I can mix up my day a little bit because I sit at home all day and. You know when you're in all day and the atmosphere is the fucking same all the time, it just mixes it up so I can watch the world go past out the window as sad as that is. So yeah, post-workout, that's all I've got to fucking say. Good session though, good fucking session. Everything in life is just clicking right now. Training, happiness, just found, you know, I'm just back on my own two feet, which is, it's been a long time, you know, take, I've been like this or well, previously for like six months. It does wear you down and like I say, you don't really realize it until you're sort of out of that situation. And ever since I've got out of it, I feel I'm 10 times better for it. And it's just a start. That's what I say, it's just the fucking start. Jordan. Yeah, that's
Right, next meal coming at you. Fuck. 6.35. And someone commented on my YouTube video saying, John, can't say your last name, mate. Looking sharp, George. Thank you, mate. Appreciate that. Meal four. If you include my intro, it'll be meal number five. This is an intro meal. I don't know, let me know in the comments. 200 grams of chicken breast that is weighed raw, 100 grams of jasmine rice, and 50 cheddar cheese. Now, my chicken is not seasoned at all. My rice is not seasoned at all. The only thing I've added is a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. Back to what I said in my previous video. The sauces like ketchup, Seasoning my chicken is, is a tool for me to use further down the line when my appetite starts diminishing. Gonna eat this, try and not let it go cold. Enough waffling, two minutes ten, fuck off George. Watch a YouTube video, I'm gonna stay away from being on my phone. I've been guilty in the past of eating and just fucking sitting on my phone. I ain't doing that, I'm just gonna watch a YouTube video, leave the phone over there, respond to whatever I need to afterwards. Yeah, enough waffling. Oh fuck, I forgot to cook bro broccoli. You had me I meant to have broccoli with this, but I've totally forgot about it. Shit. Oh no, the haters in the comments are going to be like, you have no fruit and fiber in your fucking diet. Fuck you. Final meal being prepared at 8.50 in the evening. Had some chicken that I cooked earlier on the barbecue, which you've already seen. All I'm just going to simply do is heat that up in the pan. Then going to have a stir fry. So what is in the fridge here, Georgie boy? We have some. Actually, no, we don't. Some rice noodles. Get them some Sainsbury's, pretty good. And I've not got any vegetables. I'm just gonna have to have it with broccoli, and I? I've not got any stir fry veg, George, you tit. This video is a disaster, isn't it? Absolute disaster. The key to a great stir fry is using Li Kum Ki, black bean garlic sauce, go to your supermarket, go to the world section, have a little gander and you'll be able to find this. Your stir fry, even though I'm not really having a stir fry today, which I should be, but I always use this bad boy. Very, very good stuff. Mix it all in together and it looks fairly okay. <laughs> I wish I had more vegetables there, but we can go with a broccoli style stir fry. Added the chicken in, heat that up, added some black bean sauce, just mix it all together, heat it up for two minutes, you're good to fucking go. And that, my friends, is what the final meal is going to look like. A bowl of goodness. Coming to you at quarter, nearly quarter past nine. Macros or wherever the macros will be in this video will be. And that is my day of eating. How fun. Now supplementation wise. Have a little supplement cabinet or drawer, you should call it that. We are going to take three capsules of the pure omega-3 from Perform, really good. Some ashwagandha, ashwagandha, whatever you want to call it. And then we're also going to take about 30 minutes before we go to bed, the sleep stack from Dr. St. Martins. Is it St. Martins? Dr. Dean St. Martins. Yeah, I got that right actually, surprisingly. I thought I'd get that wrong. Those are my supplements, keep that out. Is there anything else that I need to take, I need to remember? No. Out of Forgot about that. <laughs> Final taste test of the day. We're gonna get a little bit of broccoli, get a little bit of chicken as well. This is gonna be a big mouthful, Georgie boy. I'm not sure if I can do this. Broccoli still has a little bit of crunch to it. Really like that. To be fair, just having broccoli in it is actually pretty good. Can't lie. I was a little bit apprehensive about it when I cook it when I was cooking it. Video of choice with the last meal of the day is going to be ape huncho. I like watching Ape Huncho's videos, they're really, really good. This one is called Birmingham Police Officer Guilty for Attacking Teen, Standard, and Manchester Broad Daylight Knife Fight. Again, just your standard day in Manchester. Great, I'm going up to Liverpool on the weekend. Hopefully I don't get into any knife fights because you know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna fucking take everyone out, ain't I? Macros for the day, 318 grams of protein. Oh my God. 318 grams of protein. The Police are gonna come, the protein police. Nino, Nino, Nino. 593 grams of carbs and 72 grams of fat. Giving me a total of 4,313 calories for the day. That is me eating. I eat quite big actually, because you know I'm a little fucker. Yeah, unfortunately, it is what it is. I mean, my expenditure, I do over 10,000 steps each day because I've got an annoying German Shepherd that needs walking twice a day. It is what it is. Comment down below, Max, if you've watched the whole thing. This is Max. He's looking old. He's looking tired. He's going deaf. Max, can you hear me? Max. Hello. 
these 13 blessings. Lots of love for you guys in the next one. In the right, boy. We'll see you in the next one, yeah? Can you hear me? <laughs> Turn one into two with this press down at 60, grinding white. white. Brick boys on the site, she just saw the watch and lost her mind. Lost it. Baby, I'm a savage, I'll put your ex in the hospital bed. Clamp four on the press last night, then brought that down and said, I got paid a plug by eight and it's nearly half past six. Stressed out to the max, knew I should have paid this 